So good evening, everyone. Welcome to not the routine moderation sessions that we've been having so far on the graphic novels, but this is very, very different. This is something which is very close to the heart of the government and a lot of other things, which I'm sure Aditi ma'am and Urvishi uh, ma'am will be doing more justice to. But I just want to welcome you to the platform of what we've been working for the past two years in the COVID times with online. And here you have Aditi ma'am from BPS 45 Gurgaon taking you to the journey and asking a lot of questions to Urvishi ma'am and a team on the unique concept of creating a book, a graphic novel on combining two states. And you also have Urvashi ma'am and a few more people joining in. But for me, I just want to welcome everyone. And uh, uh, may Aditi. I say Dr. Bishwajit Saha sir has joined us. Excellent. So over to Aditi ma'am. Aditi ma'am will do the welcome. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you for being here. Good afternoon. Good evening, everybody. Namaskar. It is my proud privilege to be here to moderate this session. Uh, thank you so much, Dr. Saha, for being amongst us. I think this graphic novel owes its uh, origin and its fruitful completion to a few people who we can see on the screen. Of course, the mastermind, uh, Mr. Sandeep Sethi, and the absolute unwavering support of Dr. Saha. I think Dr. Biswajit Saha is no stranger to anybody who is part of CBSC schools. He's the director, skill, education, and training. And I think we are all very familiar with the kind of groundbreaking work he's doing, trying to steer CBSC on a completely new uncharted path of skill education. The national education policy has very clearly articulated the importance of skill building. And as a CBSC school head, I look forward to sessions with the students, with the parents and with the teachers, which I'm sure Dr. Saha and his team are creating so that all of us enter the NEP duly empowered and ready to take on new challenges. Thank you, Dr. Saha. On behalf of Sandeep Sethi ji and on behalf of Urvashi Varmanan and on my behalf, thank you so much for joining us. We want to hear you. We want to hear your vision. And we want to get all the support we possibly can from you so that we can move ahead on this journey. Thank you, sir. Thank you. So, first of all, uh, good evening to everyone. It's a great occasion. A, a movement started by a Jaipur group, but uh, gradually reached to Pan India. Uh, that's the power of educators. There's the power of all the school leader and definitely uh, the teacher uh, and, and not only limiting the teachers itself that, that a huge variety, I think over a period of time. Once again, uh, it, it, these uh, conversations uh, is uh, rather uh, a, a kind of showcasing what the power of teachers and power of teaching community. So if we look back, uh, the Honorable Prime Minister's vision with Ek Bharat, Shrest Bharat, I think uh, taking his vision uh, into a reality, CBSC uh, played a crucial role uh, the by way of unifying our school cloud. And here you all have played an instrumental uh, leadership role by way of not only involving you teachers, but also creating some kind of document and literature and effective way uh, taking the storytelling approach uh, with our ancient culture and wisdom uh, and that also at the ground level. I, first of all, let me congratulate uh, Urvashi ji uh, for uh, uh, narrating uh, this uh, Japi with camel in a, in a manner which itself is not only showing the rich heritage of our country and it is not limited to a, a specific zone, but of course, the influence of a zone, how it can be uh, integrated in, in a pan-India perspective. That's the power of the writer. So definitely, 
uh, we, we are here uh, for launching uh, this uh, specific uh, agenda. But besides this, how this kind of storytelling approach can be uh, rather visualized in terms of NEP implementations. I know Aditi ji and other team members, who are all esteemed principal, you are working day and night to implement NEP in a true spirit. And here, all the teachers uh, community are uh, definitely, uh, they are torch bearer and helping the leaders to present in this manner. So we, from the side of CBSC, we are really happy uh, to witness um, uh, such kind of involvement. And in every forum, uh, if anybody asks what is the power of CBSC, I always say and confess, it is our principal, it is our teachers, and it is our school. With this strength, I think, the different model and we, we can co-create, which will uh, definitely going to change the landscape of education in the country. We are talking about experiential based learning. We are talking about uh, uh, learning outcomes where center of um, um, discussion should be learner. So at this point of time, how to bring, so in every forum, different consultations meet, meeting, हम लोग ब्रेनस्ट्रॉम करते हैं लेकिन आउटकम्स एक ही जगह पे अटका हुआ रहता है हाउ टू इन्फ्यूज दिस थिंग्स इन द क्लासरूम सो दिस इज अ रियल चैलेंज बट दिस काइंड ऑफ इंटरवेंशंस ऑफ एक्टिविटी बेस्ड लर्निंग विल डेफिनेटली गोइंग टू प्रोपेल द चाइल्ड माइंडसेट हाउ वी कैन डेवलप द बेसिक एनालॉजी ऑफ एजुकेशन सब्जेक्ट इज इमेटेरियल and that's why multidisciplinary approach of education is possible only when teachers are ready to accept this kind of literature in hand so graphic novel momentum is a huge contributions of art integrated learning and next step we are working with the, the different school group how uh, that skill promotion because a new education policy is highly advocating. And if, believe me, in last uh, one year, if uh, any discussions are happening in, in Ministry of Education or skill development or in other ministry related to education, there half of the discussions are on how to promote skilling. Mm -hmm. So, the basic agenda of stringent approach of separated curriculum based on the textual material, those days gradually after five years, maybe the learning outcomes of competency should be the center point of discussion. And there, this kind of literature, whether it is in the mode of big theater, small theater, through filming, or it could be scientific, uh, crisscross culture of innovations using technology or art integrations or design thinking approach based curriculum delivery model we have to instill. Once again, thank you um, all the esteemed members who have joined us and uh, especially uh, Shandeep ji and uh, Pele Schools group and the uh, Princess Dia Foundations uh, again, enormously uh, activated out of the track how uh, education's landscape may be in ka jo jogdan hai, uh, we, we must acknowledge. And CBSC is always open uh, to support this kind of movement, no matter who is coming to help us. We are open to help and work with each other. With this note, uh, once again, thank you and wish you all the best. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, I think I speak for all of us when we say that ideation can happen and it happens through people like Mr. Sandeep Sethi, but without the support and the active encouragement of CBSC, we mm -hmm. would not be able to move ahead. And in that, sir, Dr. Saha, we wish to thank you because you're always there. You're supporting us with your words. You're supporting us with your presence. And you are, I know you're working round the clock to create training modules for teachers to empower them for the next session. Thank you very much for being here and for sharing your thoughts. Thank you, sir.
I'd like to take the conversation forward by introducing our very erudite uh, writer of this absolutely beautiful, colorful book. I hope you all have it with you called The Camel with a Japi. Uh, so I have a three page resume of Urvashi, ma'am. And if I start reading that, we'll be doing only that till 4.30, which we don't want to do. I'd rather have a conversation with her. However, the important points we must know, uh, Urvashi ma'am has been part of the education family firmament for more than two decades. She has been working at the palace school as principal since 2007. She's written a series of books on general awareness and AVS for primary school children. She has written several articles, uh, which have been published in many journals and magazines. She's also written and produced many musical plays for school children. She was the sole uh, representative from India for the Global Assembly of Educators Sans Frontier in Dallas, USA in 2012. She's been a CBC, CBSA resource person uh, for several capacity building programs. She has been appointed the Deputy City Coordinator, Academics and Training at, for the Jaipur City. Uh, she has, uh, I think, in, in creating of this book, she has um, brought together all her skills, her creativity, her communication, her critical thinking, and all that we are seeking to do. We are seekers. She has pioneered this. So, uh, Urvashi, I'd like to begin um, this conversation by asking you something about this book. I have read it, um, and I think CBSC has been very excited by it. Uh, many of our schools are waiting for it to hit the stands. Um, I'd like to ask you what uh, motivated you to write this beautiful book, Camel with a Japi. Thank you so much, ma'am. Uh, the entire process started when uh, CBSC told us to go in for the Art Integrated Learning Project. And uh, this was, uh, the pandemic had already hit and it seemed to be a very tall order uh, to do during that time because we were all struggling to become digitally more literate and savvy. And here it was, we had to connect with the teachers, we had to connect with the students and then to also to connect Assam and Rajasthan so this came in and at the same time, uh, Sandeep sir also came up with the graphic novel concept that the graphic novel needs to be done. So uh, at that time, it seemed to be a very tall order and I wondered how we are going to go about it. And uh, so anyhow, we, we gave the project to the students to do, gave them the teachers, gave them the guidelines for Assam, Rajasthan. And when the research started pouring in, I found that such interesting information had come in that... Uh, it was a pity that, and they were all in bits and pieces. So, uh, and one child wouldn't know what the other had done. The other one wouldn't know what the third one had done. I really felt there's so much we have in our country, especially when we talk of Rajasthan, Assam. You know, everybody should know more about these states. So, and how to go about it so that the information doesn't become boring. So idea just germinated that uh, instead of doing a regular graphic novel, initially we thought we'll do a graphic novel on Rajasthan and Assam. But then the information was like huge. So it turned into a story and it just grew organically somehow, you know, with a lot of uh, information coming in from the students. Then of course the teachers were roped in, they did the research bit, I did my research bit and this thing just happened. So. Uh, thank you, Urvashi. So while I was going through the book, I found um, elements of art integration. I found a lot of elements of interdisciplinary learning. Um, I've also found a lot of, uh, you know, activities which sort of lead to competency-based learning, you know, competency-based questions. And uh, I'm sure you've been thinking on those lines, especially because you've created this novel. And uh, like I said, it's a pioneer novel in that sense, because now all of us want to uh, sort of follow you and, and link our two states together. We've done a lot of art integration in our school as well, but we've not managed to integrate the states together. We have learned about um, Telangana, for example, in Haryana, and students of Haryana have learned, uh, Telangana have learned about Haryana, but we've not been able to wed it together. We are trying to do that. So uh, what, has, what has been your challenge in making all these elements come together? There must have been challenges. And we'd like to hear from you and your teachers especially about the competency-based learning uh, bits? Uh, Ma'am, there were a lot of challenges and uh, I would say there were interesting challenges. So I think, as I mentioned, the biggest challenge was 
there was such a huge inflow of information so it was difficult to understand which what information to keep and what to just do away with it. because everything that came up about rajasthan and assam was so interesting that was difficult to pick and choose from the information which poured in and so that that sieving of information was very difficult then of course we wanted to make it an interdisciplinary uh, project integrated with art so here in anita ma'am i i would say that anita ma'am was the one who showed us the way how we could integrate art with this book so uh, when she came to know about the concept and she and both uh, you know archay ben uh, manoj ahuja ji and biswajit saha ji they were all very excited and they really were very uh, encouraging about the theme and aditi uh, 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 anita ma'am was very very specific that you must integrate art forms uh when you're doing the book so therein we went and we integrated various art forms of the, the of the uh, country we have odisha patachitra we have worldly art and then we have got uh, block printing uh shown mandala art and kalamkari gond painting so basically art forms from all over the country have been used to depict to do the illustrations which have brought elements of assam and rajasthan alive so that was the art bit and the next challenge was of course how to verify the information that we were gathering because it was the pandemic time and it was very difficult to come across uh, proper literature so we had to depend a lot on the internet so to choose the correct source and there were times when we were very confused about the correct source so then we were very fortunate to to uh, you know cross check with the scholars from the assam university historians from uh, jaipur we had dr reema huja she is the director of maharaj sawai man singh to museum and she's a renowned historian so she was able to cross check and verify and assure us that you know where we were uh, right and she would tell us that no this is not correct whatever is coming on the internet is just a poetic license just avoid that and take these bits so those were like real challenges and the biggest challenge was thrown across by sandeep sir when uh, when we were uh, you know part way through the book he suddenly said you know urvashi ma'am you must integrate uh, the story with the ncert objectives and outcomes and i said oh my god how we hmm. going to do that 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 is not uh, how can we do it he says no you can definitely do it you will be able to map the chapters because he had got you know he had gone through a few chapters and he had read it and he says you will definitely be able to map it with the ncert uh, objectives and outcomes and uh, so with a lot of trepidation i spoke to the teachers and i said look this is what we need to do and the teachers were equally stumped and they wondered you know how they were to do it but to all credits they all got into it with full swing and we were very happy to see that we were able to map the chapters with the ncert learning outcomes and objectives right from grade 3 onwards so that was very and that was the time when uh, we started understanding what the interdisciplinary and the multidisciplinary approach is all about and how to go about it so that was it then the next gauntlet again was thrown by sandeep sir he says make it into a comprehensive educational document and make now you've got the learning outcomes now you do your competency based questions and on one hand here was the story developing the art team was busy the teachers were busy doing the curations and there this work also came up and again we were stumped for some uh, a while and we said how to go about it yet again the teachers they rose to the occasion and they were able to use the learning outcomes that they had mapped with the ncert documents and they were able to make competency based questions i'd like to share one thing so when we got the initial set of competency based questions ready very excitedly we took it to uh, our chairman and shri manoj ahuja ji and he had a look at it uh, biswajit sah sir was there and he had a look at it he went through it he says it's good but i still can find a lot of uh, cbqs which have got very direct questions so that was again another wake up call so that was the second next challenge he threw that none of them have to have, to have direct questions mm. we went back again then extensive sittings were uh, there with the teachers one on one with the subjects and uh, they really poured their heart and soul into it 
and they came out with some beautiful competency-based questions. You'll be happy to know that we've got nearly about 64 case-based competency questions uh, taken out from the book, cutting across 12 different subjects. So interestingly, wow. certain chapters and uh, stems uh, were used for by different subjects. So okay. that was a very unique experience that all of us had. I'm sure. Yes. And now I think um, uh, we'll also take you through a few samples of the work yes, we, being done. I think, I think the audience would be very happy to see the experience of the teachers. Yes. And before they start, I just want to remind all the viewers about one thing. I don't know if you noticed how many times Urvashi ma'am said that when each time a challenge was thrown, she was stumped, but she rose. Then she was stumped, but she rose. And that is the message I want to give to everybody through this channel, through this medium, that each time a challenge is thrown to you, please rise like Urvashi ma'am. Please take the challenge. Because out of this chaos, out of this disorder, we'll create something beautiful, which is going to help generations of learners across the country. Hats off to you, Urvashi ma'am. I mean, I have read this book twice now. And each time it has had a different meaning for me. It's really beautifully done. Thank you. So over to the teacher. Let's share. Let's share the best um, uh, competency-based uh, challenges, questions, learnings. So they'll be sharing uh, uh, some stems and a few questions. And uh, so we'll just start. I think uh, we can start with the English, uh, Ms. Bhavna Goda. Yes, ma'am. I'm ready with my presentation. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Bhavna Godha. I'm here to present case-based questions from the illustrated novel, The Camel with the Chavi. The topic that I have chosen for my subject, English, is case-based factual passages from reading section of class 12, English. The passage has been taken from one of the chapters titled, Twist with Wai, Manas and Kaziranka. With the permission, I will read out the stem. Every species play plays its own special role to maintain life on Earth. Let us recall the incident of 1990, wherein vultures were found to be dropping dead suddenly for no apparent reason. The Indian vultures, which used to number around 40 million birds in the 1990s, were reduced to fewer than 100,000 birds, crashing by more than 99% in some places. Studies reveal the cause of death to be a veterinary medicine called datlofenac, which is routinely given to the livestock as an anti-inflammatory drug. Because the vultures fed on the carcass of dead livestock, they consequently died of kidney failure due to overdose of the drug in the livestock system. One may wonder how it may matter if vultures die. They are not known for their beauty like peacocks or for any sweet chirpings like some other birds. But as scavengers, they have to keep our ecosystem clean and healthy. Once their numbers dwindle, it had a domino effect which impacted many species. The ecosystem is dependent on vultures to dispose of the carcasses of livestock. Once the vulture population declined, feral dogs and the rat population took over the work of the vultures. And in this process, diseases like plague, rabies and anthrax became a huge health hazard for human beings. The first question caters to the visual learners. As picture vocabulary, the students you know, remember the word meanings and sometimes the context for a better understanding. The question is, which of the following images best explains the meanings or meaning of domino effect as used in the above paragraph? The correct answer for this question is option A. However, if the child chooses option B or C or D, it shows that the child lacks contextual clarity. Because at this stage, the child should be able to identify significant use of figurative meanings of words and phrases as given in the text. Case-based factual passages comprise visual inputs in the form of graphs, pie charts, pictures, data. The next question tests the analytical skills of the students, wherein the student evaluates the information presented in the form of pie chart. The question is, which of the following options will represent the comparative population of vultures in 1990 and the present year? If you see the uh, pictures, 
The light shade represents the vulture population in 1990, and the dark part represents the vulture population in the present. The correct answer for this option for this question is answer C. But if the child answers or chooses option A, B, or D, that means the child lacks analytical skills, which means similar questions need to be given to the students for more practice that will hone their analytical skills. Remaining three questions uh, were framed that could test the learning outcomes wherein, you know, a student is able to provide facts and background knowledge in areas such as science. Making case-based questions initially seemed to be a daunting task, but thanks to NAP 2020, that envisages a holistic and multidisciplinary education approach, thereby developing all capacities of a student in an integrated manner. This transformation in teaching method that brings multidisciplinary learning into picture is really appreciable. Thank you, ma'am. That's all from my side from now, for now. Thank you, Bhavna, ma'am. We'll be coming back to you again. Um, sure. Uh, ready for the next presentation? Yes, I think uh, it should be Mr. Sanjay Vaid with maths. Yeah. <clears throat> Good afternoon, ma'am. Uh, from your permission, I'm just sharing my screen. Yeah. Good afternoon all. I'm Sanjay Ved from the Maths Department. Today's CBQ, which I will discuss with you, is from class 12, uh, Mathematics. The chapter which it belongs is Application of Integrals. It is chapter 8 from NCRT book. And the reference I've taken from the camel with the Japi, and the chapter which has been related to it is the story of the Indian child. This time is as follows. The leaves of the Assam table are dark green and glossy and fairly white compared to those of the Chinese tea plant. So this is the stamp which I've used over here to create the question. Now, in this case, the question is as follows. The boundary of the tea leaf uh, look like two intersecting parabolas as shown in the figure. The tip of the tea leaf represents the intersection point. If the first parabola passes through the like, the question mean starts from here. If the first parabola passes through the coordinate 1, 3 over 16, and the second parabola passes through the coordinate 4 over 9, 1, respectively, answer the following questions. The first question is, what is the equation of the first parabola? Like here, the correct answer is the A option, that is 3x squared equals to 16y. Suppose if the student doesn't answer correctly, then in that case, we can easily assess that the student is lacking with the conceptual knowledge on the conic sections. So more and more practice or more and more uh, uh, like the function equations, he has to practice to get to know that the particular equation represents which type of uh, curve. It can be a parabola, it can be an ellipse, it can be a hyperbola, it can be anything. So uh, with the learning outcome, the students will learn to make equations from the figures. Now the second question is, what is the area between the two parabolas? Here you can see the green shaded region. That green shaded region is representing the area of the T leaf. Now, again here, suppose if the student doesn't able to answer correctly, the correct answer is four square units, and if he doesn't able to answer it correctly, there can be two possibilities in it. Either he has done some kind of computational error, or either the concepts are not clear of integrals which has to be used or which are used to find out the area of the uh, region between the two curves. From this particular question, you can see very well that the students will learn to find the area of the geometrical figures using integration concepts. A very interesting fact I just want to highlight over here. On this particular screen, you can see everything. Like say you can see the parabola figures, the uh, intersecting figures, the questions are also there and the stem is also there and the illustration is also there. If you observe over here, the questions does not have any kind of direct relationship 
with the stem so we have taken the help of the illustrations that from the illustration we have taken the tea leaf and the tea leaf the shape of the tea leaf we have plotted in the form of the graph or in the form of figure which has been drawn on the x axis and y axis so and then the question was cbq was generated so this particular approach can help in future also and present also that how to relate a mathematical concept with a real example of the world similarly the students will able to understand that how to implement the mathematical uh, formula is the mathematical teachings which we have taught uh, which are used in the school or in the classrooms how they can use those things in their day to day life so that they can use it uh, in a proper job which they have been given over there and it will be very helpful in the future studies even to understand better to implement the mathematical concepts this is from my side thank you so much ma'am thanks a lot sanjay sir i think uh, as students of uh, humanities we always lament that why can maths not be made more real yeah. why can't all that is taught in the on the board and in the square notebook why can't it be seen and how beautifully you have shown parabolas through uh, tea leaves something uh, very unique i must say and has certainly i'm sure planted the seed of new seed of new discovery in the minds of every maths teacher how to find parallels between what they are drawing what is theoretical knowledge with the world thank you thank you so which subject comes up next is it science or is it social science social science ma'am okay good afternoon everyone My name is Seema Gupta, TGT Social Science, and today I'm here to present case-based questions for the subject Social Science. These questions are drawn from the passage from the illustrated novel The Camel with the Chappi. We selected a passage from the chapter Twist with the Wild and blended it with the chapter Natural Vegetation and Wildlife of Class Ninth. While framing questions, we also try to achieve the learning outcome of the chapter. as specified by as specified by ncert please allow me to read the stem kaziranga is regarded as one of the finest wildlife refuges in the world the park's contribution in saving the indian one horned rhinoceros from the brink of extinction at the turn of the 20th century to harboring the large single largest population of the species is a spectacular conservation achievement The property also provides habitat for the number of globally threatened species, including tigers, Asian elephants, wild water buffalo, goats, eastern swamp deer, sambar deer, hog deer, capped langur, hulog gibbon, and sloth bear. The park has recorded one of the highest densities of tigers in the country and has been declared a tiger reserve since 2007. It also provides a safe and healthy habitat to the Ganges River dolphins in some closed oxbow lakes. It is also an important area for migratory birds. What is a gaur? Asked Rajiv, finally paying attention to the conversation. It is also known as Indian bison. It has been listed as vulnerable on the IUCN red list since 1986. I have framed several questions. in order to achieve different learning outcomes and improve learning abilities for children the first question is based on analytical skill where the child has to pick a correct option from the multiple correct options the second question caters to the visual learners wherein the child has to identify the given picture the third question is based on understanding of a child wherein the child has to match correct option The next question is assertion and reasoning based. Assertion: Kaziranga has recorded one of the highest densities of tigers in the country. Reason: It has been declared a tiger reserve since two thousand seven. Option B is correct answer. However, if a child picks up A as the correct option, he lacks conceptual clarity. At the same time, if the child picks C or D as the correct option, The child lacks in comprehension skills. 
The last question enhances a learner's ability of thinking process and spatial imagination, wherein the child has to identify correct places marked on a political map of India. So these were a few questions from a single stem for your perusal. We have framed several CBQs for social science catering to different classes. With this, I end my presentation here. Thank you. Again, Again. Uh, SST, which is uh, sometimes seen as a dry subject, has been brought alive. And a lot of real-time experiences shared by the children. I'm sure they'd love to talk about extinct animals. And their favorite, for some reason, seems to be the dinosaur. They love to talk about dinosaurs. They love to draw them. I think the whole idea of, of that huge, beautiful animal, especially brought alive by the movie Jurassic Park. Um, a lot of children have somehow wanted to have dinosaurs around them for a long, long time. And this would ignite their excitement and help them to seek more information, perhaps. Now, is it the turn of science? Yes, ma'am. Science. Okay. I think Sandeep sir has put in a message in the chat box, ma'am. I think he's asking for questions, if any. Mm. Hmm. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Shemdu. I take chemistry. Please allow me to share my screen. Yes, please. Thank you, ma'am. many CBQs on different chapters of our novel, The Camel with a JAP. I have tried to link chapter H of the novel of mines and minerals with unit 6 of class 12 chemistry, general principles and processes of isolation of elements. This is the extract which I had taken from chapter 8. Apart from salt, what else is mined in Rajasthan? Jo Pierre asked, looking at Goranj, as he knew that is where the answer would come from. Goranj perked up and said, well, I know that Rajasthan is the sole producer of lead and zinc ores, selenite and wallastonite. He paused, fishing out his tap, and it is a leading producer of silver, calcite, gypsum, steel and semen grade limestone, feldspar, etc. Apart from that, it is well known around the world for marble, sandstone, granites, etc. You will be surprised to know that 70% of bone china tableware is produced in Rajasthan and it is also ranked second in copper production. Wow, our visitors chorus, this state is rich in so many different ways, said Gaitik. Well, the list is endless actually. Goranj confessed, Rajasthan is very rich in mines and minerals. Based on this extract, I have made certain questions. So the first question is, choose the correct option. Gaitik is fascinated to know about the richness of Rajasthan in lead and zinc ores. She wants to know how these metals are extracted. According to you, which method is generally employed to obtain lead oxide from galena and zinc oxide from sphalerite? So from this, the learning outcomes from this question would be, the child is able to identify the ores of different metals, explain the terms minerals, ores, concentration, benefaction, calcination, roasting, etc able to distinguish the various methods of extraction of crude metal from concentrated ore. The four options which are given are calcination, roasting, leaching, and hydrometallurgy. The correct answer for this question is roasting. Now, if a child marks A, C, or D as the correct answer, that means the student lacks conceptual clarity of the topic. Through this question, the student recalls his knowledge in identifying the type of the ore as well as he uses his analytical skills to distinguish between the various methods to extract crude metal from concentrated ore. My second question is, choose the correct option. Sodium cyanide, NaCN is used as a depressant in the concentration of an ore containing zinc sulfide and lead sulfide. What is its role? And the four options have been given. Out of this, the, th the correct answer is C, which is first and third. It selectively prevents zinc sulfide from coming to froth, but allows lead sulfide to come with the froth. And the third one is it reacts with zinc sulfide to form sodium tetracyanozincate and lead sulfide forms froth. So C, third, that is first and third, these are the correct answers. 
the learning outcome for this question is the student is able to explain the principles and processes involved in metallurgical processes. Now, if a child suppose marks A as the correct answer, that is only one, that is that might be due to carelessness of the child or ignorance of other options. If a child answers B or D as the correct answer, so that means some learning gap is there which needs to be rectified. I have framed some more questions from the same extract. Now from this literary piece, this literary piece, the camel with the Jappy has actually given us an insight as to how we can guide our children to look for scientific aspects beyond the science book in every sphere of life. That's all from my side. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am. Once again, much like maths, science <laughs> has been brought alive, made more real, and the child will no longer have to learn up something. They have to understand, they have to apply that knowledge. And I think as educators, we really seek that. I mean, I as an educator really want the children to understand and learn for the joy of learning, not just because they have to pass a test or an exam and move to the next class and as quickly as possible, forget this one concept. It should stay with them. And storytelling is, I think, the best kind of way to, to uh, reach out to children. Are there any more presentations? I think there's yes, one more. We have, from, uh, we have two more. So the next one is uh, from IT, Information Technology, Ms. Neela Mahapaj. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Nalima Baj. I will now share my screen. I'm going to present before you the CBQs for class 10 subject information technology. The passage for case-based questions we have taken has been extracted from the last chapter, Hadiyu of the novel, The Camel with the Jappi. Here we were able to map it with the learning outcomes of employability, employability skills part A, which is common to all skill subjects offered by CBSC. The learning outcomes to be achieved through these CBQs are to make the students aware of the importance of sustainable development by building green skills in them, also to identify the types of entrepreneurship, characteristics and role of entrepreneurs by building required skills. These are the pages of the novel from which the stem has been extracted. The highlighted portion that you can see is the stem. I will now read out the stem for you all. Yes, we chorused happily. Priyamada continued. The foundation is a non-government organization, which is a philanthropic social outreach initiative. The program areas are skill building, health and hygiene, education and capacity building in agricultural practices. PDKF, as the foundation is popularly called, has worked extensively towards uplifting the lives of underprivileged women and girls in Rajasthan, where literacy rates are low and women cannot progress given the accounts and socio-cultural barriers. It provides skill building to create sustainable livelihoods. Apart from this, PDKF is doing commendable work in the field of girl-child education. The Shiksha Diya project was started by PDKF in a few schools wherein the organization has offered scholarship and material support to girls while creating awareness on topics like menstrual hygiene as well as providing digital literacy programs. They have also been for empowering women by providing them financial literacy workshops. The first question framed here is which type of entrepreneurship is shown by PDKF? PDKF here refers to Princess Dia Kumari Foundation. The learning outcome to be achieved here is to differentiate between the different types of entrepreneurship. If you look at the options carefully, you will find that the option A, that is social entrepreneurship, is the correct answer. If a student chooses any of the other three options, B, C, or G, it shows that the student lacks conceptual clarity. The second question framed is, which of the following holds true for an entrepreneur? We could map this question with the learning outcome, identifying the myths about entrepreneurs. Here, the correct answer is B, that is, every business does not need a lot of capital to start. The other three options, A, C, or D, show non-clarity of the concept. We have framed a few more questions based on the stem. We 
We have also framed a few more CDQs which deal with computer science of grade seven and IP of grade 11 and 12. But due to the lack of time, we have shown you only for grade 10 today. This is all from my side for now. Thank you. Again, we're leaving the audience quite speechless with the kind of work this book has generated. Getting children interested in social projects is I think the way forward. Um, there is, I think I always say we are very blessed to be born in India because there is so much we can do. We keep talking to children about making an impact. In absolutely developed countries, there's not much space to make an impact in, though they do do some work. But in our country, there is so much that can be done to raise the standard of marginalized people. I think this is one way forward using IT, using outreach programs and foundations like the PDKF, which can reach out and help the poorest of the poor. Hats off, hats off to you. And now for the last presentation on? Yes, ma'am, business studies. Business studies, right. Good afternoon, all of you. I am Vandana Sharma and I teach business studies. It's my pleasure to be part of this particular session. We have connected the chapter craft cluster taken from the Camel Vida Japi with grade 11 business studies NCRT book, chapter two forms of business organization. One of the most interesting facts, which is quite appreciable and worth sharing from the STEM is that some of the small scale entrepreneurs from Jaipur and Assam initiated using elephant and rhino dung and chose ecological route to produce handmade sheets. As this is a long excerpt, so I will just focus on reading the selected text. Mira volunteered information this time. Her uncle was in a partnership with a handmade paper export firm, and she had a fairly good idea about this product. Handmade paper primarily consists of raw material like waste paper and hosiery cloth. To obtain the texture, grass, silk waste, and flowers are added to the main ingredients. Most of the time, flowers which turn waste after being used for wedding decorations are used. She paused. I recall something and further added, even in Assam, the same thing started a few years ago. Inspired by the use of elephant dung for making paper, a gentleman from Assam experimented using rhino and elephant dung to make natural paper. Following case-based questions we have framed based on this particular stem that I have recently read. My first question is, Identify the picture that represents the form of business organization in which Mira's uncle was occupied. Ladies and gentlemen, students will have to observe each picture minutely and think critically and logically about the feature attached to it in order to arrive at the right conclusion. This will help them to analyze and solve the problems effectively. Now let's move on to the next task. The second question is, if two or more people join the business of Mira's uncle and contribute capital, but secretly participate in management, then in their, that case, what will be their liability? Herein, the students have to think of a different situation, but yes, related one, which will help them to take decisions rationally and draw conclusions effectively. We have made three more CBQs on comprehension, application, and reasoning and assertion that will enhance students' creativity, analytical thinking, and reflective decision-making. We have come a long way. And today, we are proud to say that our entire journey of making CBQs was fantastic. It has been a completely new experience of connecting complex real life scenarios of business studies creatively and in an interesting manner with storytelling and illustrations. This opened our mind to an entirely new world of meaningful teaching and learning processes. Thank you. Thank you. I think uh, 
every section, every class, every subject has found its place in with the camel and his lovely japi. And of course, nothing better than entrepreneurship. This is the way forward. I mean, every child today talks about having a startup. And if they have this knowledge through a story about what kind of associations there are, what kind of businesses there are, what are liabilities of each business kind, I think it opens their mind to so much more. Um, absolutely enriching. Uh, I think I have a question for Bhavna ma'am here now. Uh, did you um, find the process of creating these CBQs? I think you speak on behalf of all the teachers who are here, those who participated. Did you find this process an enriching one? Did it, did it open up your mind to other possibilities in pedagogy? Uh, indeed, it was a very great learning experience uh, for all of us because uh, you know, it opened a whole new way um, for all of us in terms of uh, thinking and working. Uh, because, you know, many of us had to collaborate with other subject teachers. And if I talk about myself, I, I, you know, I sought help from math department, uh, you know, for making questions that uh, involve uh, statistical data, pie charts, because uh, uh, case-based factual passages, you know, do have uh, visual inputs. So, uh, of course, uh, it actually made us understand uh, that you know, it is not very difficult to have uh, an interdisciplinary uh, approach, and uh, we just you know need to tweak our thought process. So it was a wonderful journey, uh, making the competency-based questions, and definitely with man's guidance and help, uh, it was actually possible. So thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you, thank you, Bhavna. That's a huge compliment, Urvashi, ma'am, <laughs> and for all the teachers watching. Uh, here is some bit of excitement that while you are doing something new, you learn something new and you learn to teach in a new way. I have a question uh, from uh, from the uh, YouTube channel also, because they're, they're posting stuff there. Uh, so this is for you, Urvashi, ma'am. What teachers, this comes from Ms. Seema Sahajpal uh, of the Dharav High School, Jaipur. She wants to know were the teachers from schools in Assam also involved in the making of this manual? And did students also contribute in this uh, art integration project? Yes. Uh, the first part about teachers from Assam being part of this uh, uh, project, unfortunately not. We did get in touch with the school from Assam, but for some reason we were not able to establish uh, much contact and, and they did not respond. And probably they didn't really understand uh, what was happening. So, so unfortunately, we could not uh, tie up with uh, you know any school in Assam, which I think uh, is something that I wish could have happened. Uh, but I think there are other schools now taking up uh, this project also, and uh, I, I would uh, hope that the camel with the japi has paved the way, and schools would you know enthusiastically take up to this project. So it truly becomes the interlinking of the states. The and uh, when we speak of students, yes, uh, the students were definitely part of the art integrated project. So we have used certain uh, uh, research work that was done by the students. Separate research work was done also by the teachers. I also delved into it. A lot of the research work could not be used because it was not getting in sync with the storyline. So, you know, new research would come up as the story progressed. So that was one aspect. And uh, the students were part of the curation. In fact, I think our youngest curator was from grade six. And now he would be in grade seven. And he very enthusiastically took up with the curation project because he was told that you need to find mistakes in the book. And he was so mighty excited, you know, that uh, I have to find mistakes in this book. And he took the task very seriously. So, and in fact, his approach towards finding the mistakes actually uh, made us understand that he was applying the unitary method, you know, in trying to work out the figures which were given in the text, mm. so, which was again, another door that opened up um, uh, for us. And uh, they were definitely part of the, the illustrations also, uh, students who are studying currently along with the teachers, even an alumni, they also contributed. So it has been a, a beautiful project done. True, true collaboration, so yes. to say. Okay. Yes. I have a question from Shweta Bhamra of uh, KR Mangalam GK2. Uh, she's firstly congratulated the whole team uh, of uh, Saha Sir, Urvashi Ma'am and Sandeep Sir. She wants to know, can this book be linked with any literary prose poem of the syllabus from class 9 to 12? I think you have to find links, if I'm not mistaken. There's nothing obvious, but... 
Mm-hmm. If you're a good teacher, you can link the fluttering of a butterfly to um, calculus. Yes. How rightly said, ma'am. <laughs> Very interesting. <laughs> okay. I have a question from Suparna Sharma of DPS Sector 45. Uh, she's asking, if they, can the interdisciplinary approach include a few questions beyond the boundaries of particular subjects? So like you're asking a question in science, mm-hmm. but could it also include something from social science or languages? Why not? I think that's exactly what the interdisciplinary approach is all about. So it is possible. It is possible. It's just, it depends. The treatment of the question and has to be done very, very carefully. Yes. So if it is done carefully, it is uh, possible, I'm sure. But for sure, we look into it also what she's saying, but yes, it is possible. So if I have not uh, misunderstood what she has said, like for example, it was an English text from which uh, Bhavna had to take help from the math department to yes. start the, you know, and they, they had to actually derive the questions which required mathematical aptitude and uh, the aptitude of handling statistical data. So it is definitely there. Are there any other questions? You can raise your hand and we can... Come to me. Uh, one question has come to me by Shifali Bhatt. Uh, mm-hmm. She says, with so much of information available, how do we pick and choose so-called relevant pieces of information? So, yes, Shifali, it's a very good question because it was actually a challenge to pick out relevant pieces of information. As I said, the internet is there and you have got a lot of information floating here and there. But for sure, not everything that is there on the internet is correct. You have got a lot of false information also coming up. So it is very important to verify. So uh, especially in uh, in our case, uh, we had this, uh, we know a lot about Rajasthan, but Assam was completely new. And so for this case, you know, we just somehow trusted only the information uh, we got from the government sites because they can't go wrong. So we made sure that whatever we picked up were from the government sites because that, of course, uh, there would be no doubt about the authenticity and the correctness of the information. Plus, wherever we had doubts about any cultural aspect or any tradition, because that is something which does not uh, uh, really get discussed on the internet. As I said, we, uh, we were fortunate enough to get in touch with a professor from uh, Assam uh, University, and uh, she helped us to uh, you know, cross-check with a few of the facts that we have given in the book. So for sure, you need to cross-check, keep talking to people um, and uh, make sure that you're talking to the correct people. So if, if there's somebody who's from a scholarly background, uh, he or she is sure to give you or verify whatever facts you have at hand. Because certainly there's a lot of misinformation on the net. So we really have to be cautious about what we're going to put out. I would like to share, uh, especially, you know, when we were doing this, so so many uh, uh, areas, we found the internet saying that Maharaj Pratap was seven feet tall and he was having the spear of 80 kilos uh, weight and his, uh, his entire armor was maybe 40, 50 kilos and his boots were about 10 kilos. And so when I, and, and you know, one site after the other site of the other site cited the same thing and it convinced me, I said, wow, what a huge personality he was. So, but then when I discussed it with a couple of people, they said, no, if you go to Udaipur uh, city palace, uh, it certainly does not show that his clothes, the, the clothes that hang there do not belong to a seven foot tall person. So then I referred to Dr. Reema Hoja about it. And uh, she said, you know, she beware of the poetic license. That is where the problem comes. When uh, people, especially where historical figures are concerned, a lot of poetry used to be written by the, the courtiers uh, to please the king. Mm-hmm. Yes. So, so she says this is all part of the poetic uh, license. Mm-hmm. So you need to see that through and be careful with what you uh, write up and quote. So actually, a lot of the oral traditions sometimes, you know, have this have this problem. While the written text usually, um, again, that also has to be sifted through, depending on which side is writing about that history, how subjective or how objective it is. So as we come to the end, uh, Sandeep sir, we have only two minutes left before our hour is over. So what is interesting, yeah. Uh, What is interesting is, ma'am, that after the first book, you know, I remember once again, Urvashi ma'am, Jyoti ma'am, myself, we were in Anita ma'am's office presenting her the first book. And very typically of her, she says, Acha, what about the other states? 
अरे हमने एक स्टेट कब कर लिया मींस नो वन टोल्ड अस टू डू इट बट वी डिड इट नो नो बट देयर शुड बी अदर स्टेट्स आल्सो सो यू नो सिटिंग इन अवर ऑफिस इटसेल्फ द जर्नी बिगन ऑफ या कॉलिंग अप प्रिंसिपल्स हु वुड लाइक टू वॉलंटियर टू डू दैट आई थिंक विद इन 2 आवर्स वी वर रेडी विद ऑल द प्रिंसिपल्स हु वॉलंटियर्ड टू कम अप विद द अदर 15 नॉवेल्स सो उर्वशी मैम इज अवेलेबल फॉर पीपल दे कैन कनेक्ट टू हर टू सेंड अ मेल और सेंड अ फोन टू डू दैट and i'm sure a lot of people would want to know where can we get the questions or where can we get the books so regarding the questions they are going to very soon come on the diksha website and regarding the books just ask your librarian or library school librarians have got a connect with the scholastic group so just ask the scholastic group the, the library knows how to place orders with them and we have some copies of the questions also there with the scholastic people maybe they'll be also able to send them to you across the questions and it's not an easy task because i have seen the conception of it and the conclusion it also lots of ups and downs lots of ups and downs and of course there are phases where i had to tell urvashi ma'am stop it because it was not going to end so i do remember telling her ab isko bas karo aage chalte hi rahoge aap fir wo because once you get involved in it you yeah. can't hold back you know because that's a passion of a person also so hats off to all the teachers for the teachers of the palace school for tolerating with all my last minute state ab chalo isko aisa karte hain and then i know where all the stumped cases i have seen them you know and a phase came where i would say ab main school mein jaunga na teachers are going to get upset with my entry also because you never know what i'm going to come up with so i've gone through that phase and uh, they confess ki ha aapko dekh ke bhi thoda dar lagta hai ki abhi kuch aur ap naya kaam doge anyway that's all been good so thank you urashi ma'am and all the best and i know this book is going to come up in a school as a text now for class i think 8th 9th 11th or something yes. she's going to use it as a text 8th 9th 11th yes 8th 9th 11th yes. and uh, we're going to wait for 15 more the last date <laughs> uh, anita ma'am has given us is 15th march but i know uh, sorry 31st march but we still will see where we can reach that time and uh, i do remember the incident also with the assam school we were working with didn't work out we really worked very hard at it but it didn't happen mm-hmm. but i don't blame them because everyone cannot have the same vision and passion to do things because it requires a lot of work mm-hmm. so once again to all the principals and teachers who are watching the program who are in the line of preparing the 15 other books we are available online offline call us up we'll tell you how to go ahead and this is one way of telling you that this is how we can go ahead Sir, I'd, like so Sir, I'd like mm-hmm. to add something. Sir, I'd like to add something. The the teachers of the Palace School have put across, as I said, nearly sixty four case studies from this book, and cutting across twelve subjects. So I'm I'm actually uh, I like the word that Biswajit Sahaji used in the beginning of co creators. So mm-hmm. I would be very happy if teachers from other schools also can send us their case studies. Uh, which they can frame from uh, the the camel with the jappy because they will have something coming in from for all subjects in this book mm-hmm. so if they could also send us their case studies we will add it to our question bank of course giving them and the school due credit because uh, as sir said that you know it will be going up on diksha soon so we'll be able to co create a huge uh, case based question bank for the reference of teachers and students alike so here we would like to co create with all the teachers who are here listening to the uh, to the program that uh, we'd be very happy to receive your case based uh, questions so what i would also like to add here is one is writing of the book and second was of preparing the book for the questions so i do remember the hard work put in by the teachers to go through the entire ncert cbsc mapping work with each chapter in hats off to the coordinators who were doing that work and aditi uh, ma'am interestingly what happened was initially it was quite tough to get the competency based questions but a time came the people were jumping up because they had mastered how to do it Absolutely. so can you imagine of all the subject accountancy maybe ban ke aa gaye you know <laughs> it became like that so like are yeah. isme bhi ban jayega isme bhi ban jayega so that fun because that is the time we realized that the teachers have empowered it you know because they were the ones so we said we was actually wanting to very visually stop at 50 it had reached around 35 so nahi 35 se 50 50 wan to hona chahiye but then it shot up to 64 and had we not wow. to close it that time it was still gone up because that is how the teachers got involved to it yes Thank i have two questions sir sorry there are two more questions yes, which are here sure. in the chat 
Um, one says, is it okay to include mythological stories in the book? See, again, uh, avoid been... anything with NCRT where you can get in trouble. Yeah. So uh, one, we would say, yes, avoid anything which may be controversial. And two, it really, again, depends on how you treat it. What kind of a treatment you give, the way you bring it up. A lot. So depends. don't upset people. Don't upset communities. Be very, very uh, clear about that. Be very, very clear. So I have, a, I have a suggestion for that. Yes. If you are looking for a story from mythology, you are most likely to find a parallel in Panchatantra. Yes. You are saying that. Panchatantra. Yes. See, doesn't, very, doesn't ruffle any feathers. Absolutely. Yes. Very nice. And then what is the best way to train the students to give competency-based answers? My answer to this would be give them competency-based questions to solve and they will learn how to give competency-based answers. Yeah, and you know, I have remembered this doing in one of the DPS schools in Delhi when the BST competency questions were being made. I picked up all the case study questions of past two years and I gave them to the students as a STEM. And I said, now you tell me which chapter would you be able to relate to? So after they finished of the three, four months of studies, they were able to make more questions out of the same STEM. So, you know, that is the level you have to reach yourself and then make the students reach also. That is real fun. So great. Thanks, Thank everyone. You. Thank you, Rashima. Thank you, Thank everybody. You, Rashima. And yeah. if I can just end with one little thought that you talked about the ups and downs. I have always learned that if, you, if you're creating something really beautiful, there will be ups and downs, there yes, will be pain, but the eventual, uh, the final product makes it all worthwhile. So kudos but to all you. All the sessions... You know, when we went to Manoj sir's office and Manoj sir had this very typical, Are, aisa ho sakta hai. Okay. that is what the excitement he would say. So, yes. you know, we would get very motivated. I think we've shown him the drafts at least four times, you know. So that was the motivation, the passion of Biswasi sir. Because the moment he would say this, he said, nee, I want this, I want this. So they were very clear and excited about what we about were doing. What was happening. Yeah. And for us, it was very motivating that you know, we were the pioneers. That confidence to us gave us a lot of uh, motivation. So finally, thank, thank you. Everyone. Thank, thank you. you thank you thank so you. much Sarif, for this opportunity. Thank you, thank Urvashi. You, and thank, thank you, everyone who's joined in. Thank, thank you, teachers and principals. And yes, Urvashi ma'am and myself are available for the forthcoming novels of yours. Because as it is, we've got some timelines with them.